afternoon, good morning, good evening, good whatever time it is you're watching the replay and thank you for joining us live to ask some more questions. We are very excited today for our next episode of CXD Now because the time for customer experience design is now. And that's why we're doing this, to help advance the field, help more people understand what it is and help practitioners get a leg up on learning some best practices and getting insights from other practitioners. Today I'm joined by Resto Laramaski. Did I get that? Really good. All right. Well, I'll, I'll keep getting better as we get to know each other. And, and I'm definitely looking forward to seeing some of the summits that you're putting on through your company next year. Sad I just missed the last one. But um, thank you very much for joining us today, Resto. Thank you. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Um, for those of you who don't know Resto, Resto is the CEO and founder of IDEAN. It is a UX CX design firm. Um, they have offices now actually around the world, over in Europe and here in the U.S., um, and actually a new one that just opened up as well recently. Isn't that right? Yep. In New York. Yep. In, in New York. All right. So you yeah. got both coasts covered and, and, and yes. you're over in, uh, in Finland, is it? Yeah. Today we have studios here in the States in Palo Alto, San Francisco, uh, LA, Hollywood, Austin, Texas, and then uh, New York is the new one. Those are the best cities in the country to probably set up a design shop in, particularly for what you're doing. And, and yep. hopefully as well, the clients. <laughs> so that's yeah. Oh, yeah. Whoa, wow. Amazing clients. Awesome. Yeah. So I, I was just wanted to start really from the beginning because I found that it's really interesting to see how people came into this work and actually realized the importance of, of CX and how that ties into UX and how it really transcends it in many ways. Um, so where did you get your start, you know, moving towards this IDEAN company and, and the practice of CX? Oh, that's a, I, I'll give you like a as short answer as, a, as possible, but you know, my background, I'm a designer by myself, uh, more on the visual side, you know, concept design, uh, graphical design, and all that stuff. I started my first company back in 95 when I was literally a kid. Of course, I'm young still, but then I was just a kid. And <laughs> yeah, 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 something like that. And, uh, you know, for you know, other reasons, like totally completely other reasons than, than to, a, you know, build a great design company. But then uh, quite soon we I realized that, you know, probably we are better on this design thing than what I was like thinking back then, like about, you know, becoming a professional musician. So um, 99, I founded another company, uh, which was totally focused on user research. So I had like two, two companies, like one uh, focusing on understanding what are the real needs of end users everywhere on this planet Earth. And then another company focusing on design. And, uh, you know, the big dream was that, yeah, we want to have this UI, UX, and now today CX uh, company serving our customers to make life easier, more meaningful, you know, change the world literally through removing all the crappy UX and CX you can see uh, everywhere today. And it was then like around 2003 when uh, we decided to you know, merge these two companies. So having a, re a strong research angle, focusing on understanding the real needs and you know, uh, you know, emotions and, and, and all the stuff uh, of users, and then a design arm, uh, which would be more like, you know, really making the solution of what we found out in the field. So, for example, if when we went to, uh, let's say, in India um, to observe, like, how to come up with a web shop on a mobile for, like, a small village, we would, of course, you know, observe, like, how they behave and what they need and how they would use and all the business cases and all the stuff. And then through our design camp competencies, we would be able to really create that solution rather than... Uh, you know, just coming up with a bunch of research report, you know, this is how you should do it. And then over the time, like, you know, last four or five years, we've been focusing more and more to CX as well. So in my world, it goes like, you know, UI, you know, tactical stuff, UX, you know, holistic experience, and the CX, like, whole thing, whole, you know, experience of this brand or, or phenomenon or whatever it might be. And, uh, you know, that's, that's the path where we are. So it all started literally from, you know, research, the small thing. And then we expanded our competencies and capabilities uh, to cover, you know, end-to-end -end, uh, and, and offering so for wanna, our customers. So I want to come back to a specific moment or client, if we can, if we can even remember that, because it's been years now. I've also started my interactive agency in 94, <laughs> 95. 
And so I'm with you wow. in terms of this timing here. But you know, what was the moment when you started going from the idea of user experience and interface design and the screen to looking more holistically yeah. at what we now call omni-channel, looking at all the different touch points and trying to help shape yeah. the experience value across all of that? Was there a client or? Yeah. I mean, I mean, I can recall first time again. To me, it's a you know, it's a long story in a way. So it all started with, from the UI. So we were building web UIs. We were building like mobile UIs. I, I remember one of our first projects was for a, you know a certain company who was literally building the same thing that we know as a Google Maps today. But that was like wow. 99, 2001, and, and and we were like, and they were like, well, that's not good business, <laughs> and we were like, well. Probably you were just too early, and and but then you know at that point when we did all the research and then uh, you know started creating first literally mobile um, user interfaces for something like Google Maps, that was kind of the moment when we were like, hey, now if we do this thing right, people will actually adapt this beautiful idea, and and you know so it all started literally like making simple UIs even like complicated UIs simple. And then, you know, expanding from there over the last, you know, 10 years. And, and the challenge we've seen, I think we both know that very well, uh, even the word of, you know, user interface, user experience before they became more like, you know, common and more like accepted. Uh, I remember like even user research in itself, you know, uh, when we started the whole thing was quite, you know, what is it, you know, what are you actually doing? And I recall like somewhere around 2000 something, maybe one, I remember I read an article about, you know, there can be a, something like a user interface. And that was another moment where we were like, hmm, that's something we want to go after. I remember I decided not to go after advertising agency model. Like, you know, we were doing that traditional ad agency stuff in 95, 99. Um, but we just like, you know, chose not to grow that because, you know, it's not exciting. Uh, we wanted to focus on products and making lives easier to our design. Awesome. Well, one, one more question here before we, we move on to the next topic in a moment. And I'm just curious about mm -hmm. your move over here to the U.S. Because one of the things that we believe as a truth, generally, is that different cultures around the world have different behavioral psychology, you know, based on yeah. that. So I was wondering what you discovered as the difference between kind of the U.S. behavioral psychology components of UX and CX broadly versus back in Finland. Yeah, again, you know, there are at least two aspects. Like one is like uh, when we look at our, you know, you know, the people we are designing for, like the, the end users. That's one aspect. But you know, I think the more important aspect for the whole industry today is that when we moved here in the states, and when I moved here a little bit, little bit over three years ago, with you know, by myself, a couple of colleagues, uh, to uh, you know windowless room in Menlo Park, <laughs> you know, uh, very small room, very cheap back then. Um, uh, you know, what I found out is that we don't need to preach that much. People get it. Like 95 out of 100 CEOs here, in the, especially in the Valley, they truly understand the meaning of good UX and good CX. And, and most of these guys and ladies, they are willing to invest to that. Whereas in, in Europe, I'm you know, sorry to say, but it's not there yet. We've got amazing talent in Europe, but for any reason, it's led by IT companies. So I buy like these great engineers, but still thinking like, well, let's make this SAP work. And no one cares about like how people feel about it, like how they can actually use that. That's a massive trend, which is happening now in the Valley. And then, you know, when we moved here, you know, I remember it felt like trying to sell sand in the Sahara <laughs> and, uh, and, and the you know, toughest competition and biggest names here. But um, I think because of the reason that all the startups and even the big guys, they were like really understanding the need of good UX and everyone's like becoming more and more aware of that here in the States. It's obvious. So we don't need to like preach about the basics. Like, you know, you need to do your research first and you don't, you need to do this and that. It's more like, you know, hey, Let's make it happen. Let's yeah. ship it. And that's another thing I like here. I mean, you know, 
let's ship it, let's try it out, let's like sip it and test it afterwards, <laughs> which is the kind of like, you know. Problem. Yeah, well, well anyway. with the seeds of, of Stanford Design Lab and of course IDEO and so many other people, you know, yeah. it's kind of known that this is a key differentiator and we actually are willing to explore the edges and fail. Whereas a lot of yeah. areas of the country, even here in the US are, are a little, you know, less likely to invest in that. But I still don't think everyone gets it. <laughs> so that's what we're going to talk Well, no, 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 no. I, I totally agree. You know, <laughs> there's still, but, you know, looking from our point of view, you know, we're, I was able to hire, hire what, oh, like, you know, during the last 24 months, we've hired easily over 100 wow. people only in the States, wow. organically. And, and it's like, you know, that tells something that there's a need to be filled. But I think we both feel that there's need for, like, next 100,000 people and designers to join to our yes. <laughs> To movement, yeah. so we're living early. I, as I always keep telling, like if you've seen the Mad Men TV series, I always keep telling, like we're living early days of Mad Men, very early days, and uh, you know, can't wait to see the explosion. Well, I, I can't wait to see the TV show forty or fifty years from now talking about this marriage. <laughs> <It'd be> very <laughs> interesting. We yeah. we have some stories yeah, I can I'm, tell, I'm, some crazy stories. I know we yes, both. Yes, and this is why we're doing CXD now. And in fact, we'll be talking about yeah. making the business case in our next segment. Again, this is Chris Hewer, and uh, we're sponsored today by IBM Commerce and their new Journey Designer product. So thank you very much, IBM, and thank you very much, Resto Ladasmaki, CEO of IDEAN, a CX and UX design firm with offices across the U.S. in all major design hubs, I believe, except Portland. you got to get to Portland now next, and uh, with offices also in Finland and elsewhere. Thank you very much for joining us, Resto. We'll be back with segment two in just a minute. 